Okay, so this is the Education 2048 exercise. I will be reading a text uh, to you. And um, the invitation is just to sit and listen and observe. So I'll ask you to observe what's happening in your bus, what's emerging, maybe notice or identify three passengers. It could be having similar reactions. It could be having astronomically different reactions and just notice what they're saying, thinking, feeling, and what you are learning from observing your bus. So as mentioned before, the content of this course is not the exercises or the cartographies or all of these materials, they're your responses. So I'm really inviting you to, to sit with that and to observe and to, to notice these things as they come up. Okay. Imagine today is the 10th of December, 2048, and you are participating in a 3D virtual reality world Zoom call with the intent to decide how to move forward after the devastating impact of the events of the past 30 years, which were caused by human greed, arrogance, and stubbornness. There are 1 billion people on this call, a third of the world's total population today. We will start by recalling significant events that happened in the last three decades. What you will see next is just the text of this presentation. The associated images and videos are now being transferred to your body implants. Please blink twice to accept the file. The period between 2020 and 2027 was marked by an interruption of our dreams of prosperity as consumerism. This period started with school climate strikes. Young people seemed to be aware that the path we had chosen was both violent and unsustainable. They already knew that their generation would not have the same opportunities for social mobility that their parents and grandparents enjoyed, nor the stability and well being afforded by their class in relatively healthy ecosystems. In 2020, the COVID 19 global pandemic hit followed by several outbreaks of different strains of the virus. Racial tensions and civil unrest also mark this period, especially in highly divided and volatile countries like Brazil, Hong Kong, the UK, and the USA. In 2022, we had a mounting economic crisis, mass unemployment, mass homelessness, mass migration, localized famines, and the intensification of social and racial inequalities. Reactionary populist governments were democratically elected all over the world. Extreme weather, flooding, and catastrophic forest fires became routine. Pollinator populations collapsed globally in 2026. In 2019, we thought there was a silver lining to all this as we had celebrated our collective efforts when we registered the smallest size of the hole in the, in the ozone layer on record. But in 2020, the hole appeared deeper and larger than it was first discovered. For a few months of that same year, carbon emissions noticeably dropped in places where coronavirus lockdowns were observed. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was much excitement that people's attitudes towards fossil fuel travel had changed forever, but very soon emissions soared again. By the year 2027, alpine skiing was only possible in the Himalayas. Governments in many countries, including the USA and the UK, forbade teachers to talk about racial privilege or the complexity of genders and sexual identities. Teachers were also prohibited to present anti-capitalist perspectives or perspectives that challenged accounts of history authorized by the state. A global curriculum powered by artificial intelligence was standardized, causing mass teacher unemployment. They saved trillions in tax dollars, but could not reinvest in social services because the funds needed to be allocated to attempt to offset the historical level of debt created by the coronavirus stimulus packages. This shift in capital created the single greatest increase in wealth inequality in historical records, 
with the top 0.01% amassing the equivalent net worth of 90% of the world's population. The period between 2028 and 20, 2037 was marked by the real threat of human extinction. By 2028, the Amazon forest was down to a third of its size. The remainder teetered on the edge of becoming a biologically inert desert. Ironically, the market share of Jeff Bezos's Amazon company was worth a third of the total global wealth. The average temperature rose 2.47 degrees Celsius across the globe. Previous mitigation efforts had been too little, too late. All permanent ice in the Arctic was lost. All permafrost in Siberia melted, releasing methane and unleashing viruses and fungal strains that we were not immune to or prepared for. We had extensive desertification that led to massive crop failures that in turn caused the global food supply chain to break down. This resulted in the worst global famine ever experienced. There were also disastrous typhoons, hurricanes, and tsunamis making large areas uninhabitable. Many people were displaced. Borders were closed and militarized because of mass migration. Most states failed to sustain their welfare safety net, and many people were left without any government support for healthcare, sanitation, or waste management. Reactionary dictatorships were installed. Governments used mass surveillance and AI technology wrapped in the rhetoric of maintaining law and order to sweep away civil rights and freedoms and control citizen mobility. Torture and genocide against people and groups perceived as inconvenient increased at an alarming rate and became a normalized extension of police and military tactics. Nuclear and biological weapons were unleashed in wars. Five factors contributed to the unparalleled loss of human life during this time. One, unprecedented famines. Two, major viral and fungal outbreaks. Three, a global mental health crisis. Four, incurable new diseases combined, caused by combined toxins and microplastics in food and water. And five, violent civil conflicts, including state-sanctioned violence, terrorism, and police brutality. Needless to say, Black, Indigenous, and racialized populations were disproportionately targeted by state violence and suffered the most in these events due to unparalleled levels of inequality. It is important to acknowledge that many of these communities had been experiencing these levels of trauma for generations and had been sounding the alarm for ages, but most of us were indifferent and focused on trying to sustain our way of life in spite of all evidence that it was deadly. The global economy collapsed in 2036, a year after Elon Musk started a human colony on Mars. In the period between 2038 and 2047, we finally accepted that we were part of the problem and that we needed to get our shit together, grow up, and engage with our messy and painful of reality to avoid being wiped out. The Mars colony tragically failed in 2038, destroying our hopes for life on another planet. In 2039, a massive event made us all suddenly realize that we had messed up big time. We realized that we are, were addicted to arrogance, consumption, unaccountable autonomy, and control. We realized that we needed mass rehabilitation. We grasped the gravity of the fact that we were only 3 billion people left on the planet. We understood that we had caused the extinction of 70% of all species and the extinction of all life in whole parts of the earth. And we were extremely close to causing our own. We recognize that planet Earth is alive and we are part of its metabolism, not the center of, center of the world or a special species. We also worked out that humanity is capable of both horrendous and wonderful things. We started to face our own and others' humanity in all its complexity and to be taught by the human wrongs we had inflicted upon each other, upon other beings, and upon the planet. Then we all had to learn quickly, collectively, and without schools or moral manifestos to heal intellectually, emotionally, relationally, economically, ecologically, and politically. 
to abolish colonial and racial violence, inequality, hierarchies of worth and separations, to center the earth and decenter our egos, identities, human narratives and projections, to age and die in generative ways, to care for everything and everyone rather than compete, to plant, to repurpose technology, to compost, to repair and to regenerate everything to prioritize the common good for humans, non-humans, and the planet, to use words and conversation carefully and wisely with humility and maturity, to own up, to sober up, to clean up, to grow up, to show up and to exist differently. So today, the 10th of December, 2048, we convene to decide how to educate our children for human responsibility considering the needs of the next seven generations of humans and non-humans alike. We need our children to learn from human wrongs, from the violence and unsustainability caused by humanity, from our repeated mistakes of the past so that they can only make different mistakes in the future. From the day children are born, their education should prepare them to become healthy and wise elders and good ancestors for all relations. We cannot afford to repeat history. Today, we decide to do this, how to do this together as a planet-wide human and non-human family. Okay, so that is the end of the exercise. And I'm gonna invite potentially a deep breath if that feels like what you need right now. 